Hello, and um, welcome to today's Woodworking Wisdom. So, what we're going to do, I'm in the hand tool room, but I've kind of collected a few things. So we've got a pillow drill, we've got a little light, got a small router. Today we're going to use a mixture of things. When I started this project, that wasn't intentional, so I'm sorry if it means we're using lots of gear, but I'm going to bounce different ideas off you. I get the idea from watching some other videos that just gone out, so namely Carwin, Christmas is coming, it's getting near. So, one of the biggest problems I have at Christmas when we do Christmas dinner, my mother-in-law has a big cheese platter and she passes it round. And it's like a balancing act trying to move this around the table. Find it hard work, always worry we're going to drop it. We're trying to position it and try and cut a little bit of cheese off. So, could we make something that's a bit more individual so you can take the cheese you want to your plate? Can't be that difficult. So, tonight, we're going to make this, all right? We're going to let you have a bit more of a close-up in a second. But the idea with this is you can have your little cheese server board. You can take it back with your cheese on, cut your bit off, put it back. You can have six different. You could have as many as you like. Do four, six, whatever, all right? Um, if you've got someone that's a bit shippy, as in boaty, they might like this. looks like a ship's wheel. That was one of Colwyn's comments. So it gives you an idea of, so we can move it there as a tray. It could be quite nice. Other nice thing I've done with this is make sure that everything fits nice and tight. When it's stored, it's all flat pack. Fantastic, I hope so. That's our aim today, to give you something you can use at your Christmas table to move the cheese around. So for a minute, let's just put them on one side. Materials, again, you can go with whatever you like. I've got some elm, which actually I've recycled, and a piece of sycamore. All right, so we're going to use those, so the elm will be the baseboard, the sycamores, the serving things. So, with that, let's get started. So we've got blanks for our handles, main stem, the wedges, the serving boards, and sycamores so they're non-toxic. Okay, so something that's food safe, if you like, and then the baseboard. Everything I try to machine up, get it flat. That saves you a lot of time. That's quite an important part, makes it a lot easier. A bit of elm, uh, I know it's got a few woodworm holes in. This came actually out of a cattle shed. It was a divider right, within the shed. So I've machined it up, yeah, beautiful, difficult to get now. I've marked the centre. Got a little mark in here, crossed over. People say, how do you find the centre with something like a round disc? You might have drawn it out. You might have a template. I've got compass. I just work off the four sides. Think of it as a clock face or a compass. Oh, we can go there, top, either side, and that'll give me a dot. That's simple, okay? Quite easy to do, go marked. I'm already figuring out which is my top and bottom. This is the face side that we will see on the top of. This will be the underside. Just really, it's got a little bark insertion just in here. Nothing more than that. So that little bark insertion could cause a few problems, so it'd be nicer to keep it out of the way. So this is going to be our top. What we've got to do now, we're going to get it ready so we can put it on the lathe. So we're going to use a 25 mil drill to create a recess hole. And then we're going to use a 6 mil drill to go all the way through. All right, so we're going to use the pillar drill for that because I want it to be nice and straight, nice and accurate. So we're going to go to the drill, we'll get it set up, and then get those holes drilled. So we set the drill table up, 20 mil drill bit. We've set it up so I've set the depth stop on the side so we'll drill down about 11 mil deep. All right, it's not that critical the size, it's the 20 mil you could alter a little bit, but 20 mil work nicely on this. We've got our center mark and we set that depth. So hopefully we switch on. Just check where things are. First bit drilled, so we've got our 20. Let's just slide that out. I'm going to change the drill bit just to a 6 mil. Wiggle it about, let's get it in the chuck. Let's just check we're central, that looks good. Then we want to line up with what we just drilled down in there, and a little bit, that's better. This one, just going to go all the way through. So, where are we coming to? A little bit more depth. Oh, a bit of board in the middle here is sacrificial. Just 
just short. Now let's redo that, bring it up. Let's realign, there you go. That's better. So we got our hole, our 20 mil, six mil all the way through. Right. So from there we're going to go to the wood like This is a couple of bits to turn, not all of So we're going to throw this up, get it nice and clear, and we've got to dish the centre slightly. So that hole's actually going to become our mounting point. So I think if we go to the lathe, we'll show you how that's going to work. So we've got our board. We're going to put this on the lathe. You're going to say, how are you going to mount that? And what I wanted to make sure this that there were no big screw holes. We could use possibly use screw chuck. Face plate, no, you're going to put holes in it. Hot melt glue, that is an option, but time consuming. So all I've done is make up a carrier board. We have face plate, screwed onto a bit of MDF. I've drilled a hole through the MDF and I've inserted what is classed as a T-nut, a threaded prong nut, which is this thing here, all right? You can see that little silver thing, that's put in from the back fixed in place so the four little prongs will dig in. I also use a little bit of super glue just to hold it. That can be good. That goes in. That means we can fit this onto the lathe. Then we want similar style bolt. So this is a threaded bolt with a washer head. This is going to be used later as well. So we can screw this through Oh, nice and firm, that's good, so we're not going to get any wobble. Do this up. Important if you drill your holes, your 6mm, that it's the same diameter as that bolt you use. We can do that up. That should do. That's quick and easy fixed on there with that central hole. We can bring found you in place. Next thing I've got to make sure I do, I've got no idea what's been put on the lathe last time it's been in here. Uh, I think Ben had this before, I think he was doing some pens, so I'm going to take my dial right down. got no idea where the speed is, so on there, that's good, we can bring the speed up. Okay, good. So what we've got to do to this, we've got to trim up the top edge, get it square, and then we're going to hollow out the internal face quarter inch lower, six mil lower in the center than what the outside edge is. Now by machining this up, I've hardly got any movement here, which is fantastic. It takes a lot of time to level that back and get it nice and flat. So by buying machined up board or machining it yourself will save you a lot of effort. So bowl gouge, we're gonna use this and be nice just to get you in a little bit, just to see. So we've got this checked. We can turn it over by hand. Now we're gonna gouge. At the moment we've got a bowl gouge. I want to present the flute so it's facing me. We let the lathe running, we can show you a bit more detail. We'll go from there. Gently I'm going to roll my right wrist. The handle is down on my hip. We roll over, find our cut, then we can move across. Now this is quite narrow. This could be normal roll. Exactly the same technique. So make contact, gently roll it from there. That means you're not just stabbing in and hoping that you might cut or you're not. This is giving me control to find it, rest the bevel, over, move along. So, let's put the label. on. Let's bring our speed up a little bit. Faster speed will make it easier, but we've got to balance that with the safety aspect. Got the handle down low, we're we'll resting the back of the bevel. No shaving. Gently roll it. There's our cut. Push across. Small shavings to start with, we're just hitting the high bits. A bit to go. Fingertip, what's happening? Still got a little flip. You can also hear it down through the gouge a little bit. Now I've got my angle, I can just keep sweeping back across. Take the gouge off, I'll go back to that technique. Blast it, roll it. There's our shaving. Push across. That's better, hopefully, gonna be round.
nice and clear and we've got a little flat just there that we'll get there. I'm looking at the top face as well to check it looks square. So let's just do that last little bit. So rest on again. I can roll my wrist. There's our cut. Really nice, cleanly cut. No tear out. That's good. So then we're going to reposition the band around the front. We're going to do that hollow on the front. So let's move that banjo. We're going to come around the front. Bring to there. Just checking our height. I just want to be a little bit below centre. I'm thinking of the height of the gauge, where it is. I think we'll be all right with the tailstock for a second. On aim on this, we're going to hollow out the centre. So we've got a drop in the middle and it tapers, but it needs to be quite flat across the face. Six mil lower in the centre to what the edge is here. So we're going to start our cut in that centre. We're going to do pull cut. So we're going to bring the bevel right over nine and a half, ten o'clock. On its side, we're going to pull out. I've started in the middle. That's where maximum material has got to come away from. Cuts are gently getting longer. So again, just really roughening this out. How do we know where we are? We can use a ruler, bridge across, so I've probably got my six mil. Are we flat here? So by putting the ruler on, we can check we're nice and flat. We've got a little high spot. Again, good little tricks on this instead of trying to remember where you are. But one there, got blend in here. This bit at the moment through here is hollow. I want to refine that a little bit. Just feeling what's going on as well when I've got my line. Oh, I can see I'm in here. I've changed my scraper. So my refinement tool, let's have a look. Come across. A little bit to get on the edge. Got a bit of bounce there. Extremely dry bit of elm. I wonder how old this is. I wonder how long it had been pinned in that cattle shed as a divider wall. Again, just checking with the ruler, just seeing what's going on. Not dead critical, you're dead flat, but it'd be nice. I've still got a little bit of a hollow. So I'm just chasing a bit near the middle. Lighter. A little bit there. Check again, we want our flat. Okay. Nice spot there, and again, still got a tiny little bit of bounce from the machined edge of the board. I'm trying to blend that all together. That's pretty good, just a tiny bit I can feel, and it's amazing how my fingertips are better than my eyes. I know people are going to feel this, so I've got to be fussy. Tiny bit, just there. That looks good. So we've got nice flat all the way. If we put our ruler across, we know we're about six mil shallow. Right, we've got our basic shape. Okay, we've hollowed, we've got our edge. A few other things we're gonna do, but first thing we need to do is sand this. So, major thing, let's get rid of the banjo. 
move it back out the way, give yourself more access. I've set up our little extractor so we can get that working in here. Speed wise, I'm gonna bring it down all about 700. That's a better sanding speed that will allow the dust to drop off the paper. I won't burn my fingers, won't heat shake the wood. This being dry, I've not got that issue, but just puts me more in control. Next major thing, my specifier at home, wear something that's gonna protect you from that dust. Much I have the extractor going, we're gonna wear our dust mask as well. I'm gonna start with some 150 grit. I'm gonna use a cork block to help me maintain that flat. So that's a good way of working, something that will give you some grip. By being slower speed, again, you're more in control of holding this. So we've got everything set up, we've got our speed. We're gonna put the air on for the extractor. I'm just gonna put my hood on. This one, 150 nearly done, I've got a little bit more to do. So I'm gonna do my 150, I'm gonna do the edge. Then we're just gonna go up for the grades. So I'll see you in a minute when I'm up to my 400. All right, so we've got it all sanded, okay? We're up to 400. Now we want something that's food safe for this. So I've got a little pot because it's easier to work with. We had some um, citric oil, so I'm just gonna pour that in. Put the lid back on there, all right? So our citric oil, we can use nicely for this. It'll bring the colour out a bit. Um, that's quite a nice aroma. If people say, oh, I don't like it, it smells too strong, but it will lose that smell as well, which is good. If you're possibly in the States, some of your guys are going to say, can you use mineral oil? Yeah. Um, over here we get, uh, that would be classed as liquid paraffin, from what I understand. So let's brush this on. It'll soon get pulled in. Brings the colour out a bit, doesn't it? You can see I've got a couple of wormholes in there, nothing bad on this, that's good. Next bit then, important bit, we're going to take the speed right down, alright? Slow speed, I can bring it up easy. I'm trying not to spray me with all the oil. 600 grit. So we will generate a little bit of slurry and push this back in as it starts to absorb and it will get pulled in with this being so dry as well. Now I can take the speed up a little bit more. This is pushing it back into the wood. We're trying to build a finish a little bit. So we're also generating this dusty slurry, which is a mixture of the oil and the wood fibers. So we fill all those little end grain pores. Or in my case, even those little woodworm holes. Let's have a look now. Looking better, we need to burnish it. So, good secret tool bit of cardboard. Really? Yeah. Why not? So this will take off the residue. This is a finer grade of abrasive than what the 600 is. Slip it over. Soft in the corner on the top edge, a little bit on the back when I sanded it, just to make it a bit smoother. Let's have a quick look. That looks nice. Put that back out the way for a second. See what's going on, on the edge. Nothing too bad. Okay. Okay, we've got the one that we've made up. Now, on here I've got three little inserted sycamore feet. So we've got to equally spaced those. Now you could mark it out like you would a hexagonal shape or hexagon. 
draw around, draw a circle off your centre than every other mark. If you have a lathe that has so if you have a lathe that has some indexing, how about we can mark it up at the moment? Now, first thing I probably want to do, let's get my tool rest set up just to a centre height. That's not bad. Now I've got to be careful because I've got to bring it round. So I've looked at my height there. I can double check off the back. The lathe on here, we've got a bit of indexing, so I can open this up. I can see where I want to be. Let's come round, let's go to the zero, so that's there. What I'm really going to do at this stage is just draw a line. I've got one. Let's move it round. So we want eight. Draw my line. That's not eight, that's six, that's eight. That's a better line to work to up there. I thought that didn't look enough. Up there. That one there. Okay, so we know that's not. That gives you an idea how good my inducting is. Okay, three spaces. Then we'll be set in to the centre of this hole about 20 mil. So we can draw a scribble line. We could have done a complete circle with the lathe running, but we're doing it this way. Got less marks to get rid of later. Right, so now we have our three crossover points of where our feet will be set into. Real simple little thing. With the oiling done, let's take it off the lathe now so we can undo that bolt. Spin the lathe in reverse, look. A little bit more to go, I've got to unwind the bolt along the thread as well. That'll come out, but that gives us a nice easy fixing, it doesn't damage anything. Yeah, okay, we've got the hole in the bottom. We want that hole anyway, that's going to be useful. Oh, nearly, that's better. Okay. So we have our bolt, our hole, we have our dish surface, which we've said very slightly hollow. So six mil has a drop. We've still got a recess in the middle, which we're going to need. That's useful, we're going to want that. And then we have our hole coming through and our three feet mark we can drill in a second. So we've got our board, we've got the one we're doing. Next thing we're going to go and do is cut our little wedge shapes. All right, so there's six on this, as I said, you could have four. But six looks quite nice. Four, they're quite big. Each one's individual, you can pick it up and move it about. Now, to make it look good, they need to come together nicely. So we need to cut them on a mitre saw. My original plan with this as a project was to cut them, glue it as a circle, or glue it as a board, and then turn it to a circle. But actually, having got them together, I quite like the hexagonal shape. You could easily actually, instead of turning it to a circle, cut them to a circle on the bandsaw and clean the edges up. That's an option. My worry with gluing them up was then trying to get them apart nicer. Yeah, we could do a paper joint. It's a lot more work, whereas the hexagonal works nicely as a shape. You get a bit more board to use. We can do a moulded edge. They locate in underneath the centre stem. So really at this stage, the next bit we need to do is cut our bit of sycamore to those six bits. Okay, that takes a bit of setting up. We've set the chopper up next door. We're going to have a look. We've got the mitre saw there ready to go. In reality, if you divide this 360 by 6, you're getting a 60 degree angle. You need to be patient and set it up, because if they don't come together nicely, it doesn't look good. So this bit can take a bit of time to set up, and patience is a thing. I'd use some scrap wood or a piece of plywood first to do your 6, see how they come together, then cut your expensive material. So we're going to go to the mitre saw, so I'll grab my plank of sycamore. So I've set this saw up, I've got lamp stops and stuff all ready to go. We've got our 30 degrees set because it's obviously two cuts either side, so I've got that done. Have to play around, get that spot on, can take a bit of time, all right? So obviously our ball can go and we've got a length of sycamore. This is 140 millimetres wide, 20 mil thick. All right, leave it just as a long length. All right, you obviously need six of these, so it's worth having something a bit longer done this so we can cut off. Now I'm just checking the end of the board here is quite clean. The other end, yeah, okay let's go with that because that's been cut previously. No splits in this end. We can put in, we're up against our fence just checking everything is nice and square either side. So up to there. 
can check where we're going to come. I'm just checking we're taking that corner at the back. I don't want to waste too much. Go to there. Here it is. First one cut. We can then flip it over, bring it in up to my lamp stop. The back edge on here, I think I have 170 mil. We can have a measure when I've cut it, but I'm pretty sure from the length here, I've got about 170 mil, we will end up with a small little flat in the middle. So on there, get everything loaded right, check you up against the fence. I'm checking them up against my lamp stop and my stop board. My stop board I even used as a setup jig to give me an accurate 30 degree angle. So I keep this if I wanted to repeat them. That can be a quick and easy way of realigning it with the saw. Back in, slide up. And with the saw again, we're doing the same technique. We're gonna come all the way out and over. I found I got a better finish than trying to just chop down through. So I come from there, on. Down to the all the way down. One. So we have our six, should be the same size, same shape. So we're ready to go. We're gonna go back to the other room. We'll set them up on the bench. All right, so we have our six little bits. Look, let's lay them out. Let's check how they come together. Now originally, like I said, I thought about turning this to a nice accurate circle, but that's a beautiful shape in itself. What we do need to do is be able to drill a 25mm diameter hole in the centre, cleanly. Could be 30, doesn't have to be 25. If you make them bigger with a bigger flat, they're going to need bigger. We need to hold them. Hmm. So, okay, one of my favourite things I used to have at college, ratchet strap clamp. Used to use these loads. Now, this is newer type. This is a bit more sophisticated than what I'm used to. That's just an excuse that if I get into trouble and things don't work. There you go, put it on around there, come to there. I want to get the flat section lined up on the middle of one of these. That's not too bad. I know I'm going to have to come up a little bit. All right, so just positioning this, trying to check it looks equal around the edge. That's good. And we're not twisting and lifting. This is a bit different because it has ratchet arm on here. So I can do it up nicely with that. One board. That's nice, isn't it? That we can lift it about, we can move it. So we've got our centre. Let's just drop it off the edge of the bench so I clear the mechanism. We need to find the middle. How about some masking tape? Sounds a bit crude, but a little bit of tape on there. A little bit that side. Let's go to our ruler. Our rule. Let's draw our line. I'm going to extend from the join points of where the boards come together. There. Yeah, I know most of you might be able to see this quite a bit. It'd be good if it's nice and accurate. So that will just get me back to something where I can actually see my middle accurately and make sure it's going to work. Next thing, just going to put the drill bit in the pillar drill, so we go to the drill, I think, and then we set this up. Okay, so we come back to the pillar drill, 25mm drill, we've got our masking tape, we can use the pinpoint accuracy of that 
to line this up with the tip of the drill. Good remember, there's no centre point in there at the moment, so it's difficult to see. So, line that up, got our lines, clamped it down, got in position. The ratchet straps are pulling everything in, which is great. I've checked the depth so we can drill through all the, all the way through in one go. Next thing, had to raise it up on the pillar drill a little bit because the ratchet strap to make sure we've got something to clamp down to. So I pulled it up just a little bit. So if that looks a bit unusual, and then we've got that block of MDF underneath just to raise it up. That's also sacrificial so we can go all the way through nicely. So we set our depth. And the other thing we've got to do, put the glasses on. Go to the... Now, we could take the tape off, but let's have a look. I think we'll be all right. It's not going to take a lot of drilling. There's not a lot of material to get rid of. Nice and slowly. Give it time to cut it. How do I know when I'm all the way through? Feels good. Let's turn them off. Now, shavings haven't changed colour, so I'm going to come up a little bit. I'd expect him to get a little bit of MDF. So fine adjusting the depth. We can start in the same position then. Oh, now we're getting empty up. I can feel a difference. Okay, so you want to get that nice clean hole all the way through. Let's just take them back off of here now. So we take our clamps off. Clamps there, just really to stop anything moving when I set it up, make it more accurate. Off that up. So we've got our nice clean circle, no little flats. 25 mil drill, just big enough to get rid of that. Okay, it's important we remember that size because we're gonna need that again in a second. That's great. So those, we can undo our clamp. So we've got our sections cut. Next thing, we wanna do the center handle. The center handle is quite important actually. If we take these out, there's a small lip on the top here. So the boards, when they go in, interlock under that. So actually, they can't fall off. With the weight of the cheese, the taper, and that overlap, fantastic, holds everything in. I also wanted to make sure, if we can take these all off, that the whole of this is flat packable. So the same Allen key bolt that we've held it on the lathe with, we can bolt through the bottom, we're gonna to use to bolt into the stem handle. So when you're not using this, it could all come apart, go flat pack, easier to store. So at this stage, we wanna make the handle. We've got our hole, we know that. We know our cheeses are gonna go up in here. So we need to go back to the lathe. We've got our blank. So our center bit for the handle, we've got a piece of elm, about two inch square, could be a little bit smaller. I can reduce the diameter. I'm just finding my center. Nice and quick. Our pencil, we're gonna go ring drive in the drive center. Revolving ring center, tail stock. I can if I find my compass or point there. Let's just pinpoint these with a braddle would be good, but I've got my dividers there. Bring this up. Look up the tail stuck first so we're not pushing this up and then we wind the handle. A little bit off there. That's good. Knock that up. Check that's tight. Next thing, just from playing earlier, I know that the speed range on this is on a lower setting. I want to run a bit faster. Yeah, you've got variable speed, I've got a dial, but let's change gear, it's a bit like using your car. So we want to go over to the larger one there, drop that down. Shut the door. Wow, how quick was that? Now we can get up to 2,000 something if we need to. Important you can remember, even though it's variable speed, you can still use the belt setting to change it. If not, straighten the inverter more. So let's get to there, bring this on. A little bit short, we've got six inch tall rest, a bit of wood's just a bit longer. So I've deliberately given myself a runoff area this side that kind of thing off, we are about a quarter of an inch below centre height. And I'm sorry if some of this is really basic, but I'll take this speed up. I'm not getting any vibration. Handle is going down low. I can rust the bevel. Gently raise my arm. So this is all about this handle control now. Coming up, going to work from centre outwards. 
nice fake tip thing. I lose my angle, go back to that stop, up. Coming from centre, off because of the length of the tool rest. Let's move it now so we stop the lathe. Same again. So up the middle, up. There's our saving. This I can go back and forward. There's no square corners to hit. We've already lost those. That's quite good. Quite nice. Let's just level up this end. Put this just on the light bed. We're gonna want our chuck. We need to make sure, and I think I'm just a little bit big in diameter, which is why we're having a look now. Get our key. Will this fit down inside the O'Donnell jaws? Okay, small task to do with this, that'll work, that'll fit, okay. Knowing that it'll fit into the chuck, we can take that out. So we lose our ring centre, move things about a little bit. Gonna want that again in a second. We're gonna want the ring centre possibly again in a second. So let's put this on, check it spins true, it's good. Tighten up. So we're fitting down the middle of those O'Donnells, not gripping just on the little dovetail. A lot more support going that way. So we flat bottomed it inside the chuck to make sure it's square. Grip on there, hopefully. So I'll drop our speed down. That beautiful. Nice and true. Lots of gripping power there. We don't need it for what we're going to do, but it's a good example of how we can set that up. Here we want tail stock out. Just briefly, I'm going to put it back in. We've got to use a drill chuck in a minute. We want to level the bottom of this face up. Bow gouge, I'm touch high. So let's come down. So when I'm putting this on, I'm checking I can get to the middle without having to raise my arm up and feel uncomfortable or drop it down too low. Rust in the bevel, find my cut there. Come off the edge, I'm going to push to the middle. Okay, first bit done. Next thing, I want to create a little V. So the point of a skewed chisel. Drill chuck. Do that up. Now I just need to grab the drill we want. So at this stage, to make it knock down, I'm gonna use a knock down furniture fitting. How I'm holding it, it's not going to help you guys see it. So let's put the Allen key through there. Right? So that'll give you an idea of what we've got. So this screws in, it's got a screwdriver fitting. It fits the bolt that we've got that we've already used. So that's good. That one on the floor. So we need to drill this, so I've measured it. I've got a nine and a half mil drill for this. I could possibly be nine, but I need to get it in. So go to there. We need a depth. I'll bring my drill back a tiny bit. I'm lining the drill flat up right there. I'm gonna put a bit of masking tape on here. Level with the barrel or the casting of the tailstock. I wanna be just beyond, a bit deeper than the length of what we have. I've taken the speed down Hold things briefly, see what happens. No twist on the drill, that's good. We can drill our hole using that masking tape as a guide to see how far up we are, so that'll be good. So to give you an idea, I think I hold that there. You can probably see I've probably come about three mil further up than the overall length. That's just a quick and easy way of setting up a guide using the tail stock. Bit of tape. Let's bring that back, get that out. Next thing we've got to do is insert it. Probably gonna need the tail stock out of the way. Let's have a look. We've got a screwdriver head on there. 
occasionally you could use a bolt. I'm not going to use the tail stop, it's just helping me line things up and holding it so you can see a bit more. And then I'm just going to wind the lever over, push that in, do it up, got to get into that hole, move it up. That should be good. So that's in position, set up below the surface. So you can see them in there. Okay. Now we need more access to turn what we're going to do on this than holding it in the chuck. So the chuck is actually going to get in the way. So we're going to take that off. Take our spindle lock pin back out. I can still get my ring drive and tailstock centre back in place. Realign with where we were. So really the chuck was used, used more just to recess that hole. That's great. So our ring centre's back up in place. So I've just grabbed our disc. We know we've got our 20mm hole in the middle. There's our drill. So we're going to measure this. I'm going to set a set of calipers up on there. So we turn it round just a little bit more. Oh, that's good. Just clears it. So we've got to match that. I'm also looking at how deep we've got. So we've probably nearly got about six mil. Again, ring centers are good for this because we've got lots of access around it. So head stuck in, which is where we've got that bolt. Bring my speed up. Faster speed will make it easier to cut. 3 8 feeding tool. Handle low as we start, gently come up. Come in, getting nearer, start to measure it. Bit to go yet. I know my ring drive is less than 20. Bit to go. Oh, that's good. So we want to get that shoulder. I'll just grab the board back. And little things to check at this stage. But this will all come together and go in. So that's fitting into that centre hole. Fantastic, that goes in nicely. Just having a quick visual look for me now, how flat is this? Because if we have a curved surface on that cup, it's going to show. So realign. Back into there, make sure we line up, that looks good. A little bit of tension. I'm going to undercut it, so I'm going to use a skew chisel just very lightly to create slight undercut and clean up that corner. Another thing I'm a bit worried about now is how long are we, so I've turned this skew up on edge just to make sure we're no longer than the recess, depth-wise. First one done. Got to change drill bits now from what we had. We're going to the 25. This is what we drilled in the middle of the sycamore blanks to make that so we have there, we have our beading tool, we want a sharp pencil, and the scrap bit of sycamore that we cut off the end. So that scrap bit, I want to line up on here. Just see that. Sharper pencil will be good. Why? So we realign the bottom edge, flat, and we can use this as a test block in a second. We've got our line there. Let's bring that over by hand a bit. Nice and lightly, we've reset, as we said, 25, double check. So same 3-8 beading tool, handle down low, we're starting nearer to the headstock. Bit more tension, ring drive works on friction. Need to come down, still got more to go. Getting close, so let's go to there. We're going to come up a little bit now. And 
nibbling us away at the moment, just short of our pencil line. Pull that along, let's have a measure. Okay, let's give him my, the size we want. Bit tight on the top, so let's get up to there, square this up. Oh, that's good. Now at this stage, lots of checking. Just see what's going on. So let's bring that back out. Let's grab our board again. So with the board, we know that that centre stem will fit nicely into that bowl. Alright, so we've got that there. If I position it there, I'm not moving it about. So we can see that fits nicely, fits squarely. We then want to make sure we can go with, actually what we're working on will be better, this is going to fit in under. Alright, now I've still got my pencil and I've left a little bit. I want to get this nice and accurate because this is stopping these dropping out. They need to fit in, not tight tight, but tight enough. And we've still got to sand the sycamore. So I know we're going to lose a bit of depth off the top. Skew chisel instead of beading tool. Line up, let's take a bit. Let's see where we are, and again, handle low, using this a bit like a parting tool. I'm going to get right into there, so I've got to shift my body just a little bit. And again, undercut that just a fraction. So you do the same again, put it in, get your board, will it fit? That's just that little bit tight at the moment, but actually I think once we've sanded the sycamore, that'll be good. So we're trying to get that lit so it secures it, stops any movement. So we know we've got the difficult bits done now. Now it's time to have a bit of a play. Think of a shape. Check we're running through again. We're good there. What should we have? What have we got as chisels? Got a bit of bulk this end. It looks a bit thick. So we can take some of this off. The so bulk out, just nibbling it away. This is just rapid bulk removal if you like. Side of our gouge. Push along. Covering the diameter down a little bit and thinking what sort of size and diameter handle we need. Let's start to do some important bits. So this end, I want to try and keep the diameter. I like that, it's good. We start to roll a bead in here. Then we've got bulk to get out of the way. Bit big lengthwise, so let's reduce it down. We rest the bevel, up with the handle. Find our cut. Drive around. That's quite a nice half a bead that will look good. We could then have what's traditionally known in the trade as a fillet. So, right. beading tool just on there, go take that high spot. Didn't need to do this, but we started, so let's clean that up. Here, we're gonna use tip of the gouge again, so we're coming in, just start to create a hollow. Looking at what I'm getting at that little square block. Not bad. Bring that in. 
Stay with the gauge for a second. I was going to grab different cereal, but let's go with this. I think a few of you are going to go, do you not use a skew? Okay. No, it's going to get that as a... So we can rust our bevel. Bring that down through. Move my foot over a bit. Started to foul with my body as I come down the lamp. I want a bit more diameter off, I think, the top and where we're coming into. So, rust the bevel, find our cut. As this gets smaller, I've got to raise the handle up gently. The floppy bits down the end here, we're going to get in a second. We'll blend back in when we go back in with the gouge. A little bit there, come up. That's good. Let's swap over to our gouge again now. Gently touch, take them out of the way. Now we're going to blend this in. Got to play with our height. We're a bit high to get in with the gouge. Left thumb right in behind. That's a better. Then back to our skew. Landing together, that looks good. Still think top edge might look a bit thick here. But before we go vandalising it, how about we start to shake it. So free it feeding tool, finger and thumb, left hand, do a lot of work. Got to lose a bit off the tailstock end. We've got to lose the centre point of the ring centre. So rolling. So here, start square. As we come over, left fingers and thumb supporting handle comes up. Pushes the tip down so we can roll to create our bead. That's good there. Back to our skew. We're going to go against the grain a little bit, but I've got to blend that in. Better. Rest on here gently because we've got a curve in both directions, so we need something to sit on. Gently come down. I'm looking at the top shape. It was a bit curved. Let's even put a bit more shape in there so it create a bit more hollow. Does it need to be a little bit thinner in the middle? Yeah, maybe. Then back to our gouge so we can continue this curve. We get down, we create a bit of a step there. We want that to flow. So lots of little light touches. Okay, that looks quite nice. Let's just clean up a bit more on here. Getting as much as we can. Let's have a look. So, having got our shapes nice and clean, we run our fingers along, oh wow, all right. Nice and fluid down through there. There's no bumps or anything. I've got to sand it. So I've got to put the extractor on. We go 150 up to our 400. All right. So let's do the first one again. Get rid of a few things. You'll need your dust mask. I'm just going to set the extractor back up for this. Again, we can just do that citric oil. It's easier to do on the light if you're going to hold it. 
all the way down through. There's nothing there that's got to be glued together, so we haven't got to worry about that. Again, speed low, gently come up. 600 grit. Wet sand it a little bit. Don't get drawn in. Working with different directions, even folding the paper in different places. Above can be easier access to there, to the curb, this is easier. So I'm constantly moving my hands around to get to all those little areas. And still trying to, if you like, work our shape. Again, a bit of cardboard. Just really using it as a burnishing tool with that oil. Just to make the last little bit easier as we go on. Just going to refine this a little bit. So we've got the tip of the skew upright. A little bit of angle working, if you like, away from that ring centre. Coming over to the bottom of our handle. And the whole time we're trying to continue that curve, reduce it down. We've got to go careful because we've got a bit of tension off the centres. At this point, we we'll take that down to that little stub. So we can cut that off in a second, we'll clean it up. This point here, this will fit in, that becomes our handle. Lovely. So, we also need these. Six of, or however many boards you make. So, let's do a handle. Our blanks. Out, get to there, and this one up. So we've got our blank loaded. Now I've already done some of the handles, so this is what we're after. Similar to shape to what we've done for the centre handle. You've got to make six. So people often get caught up on that thing of how do I copy this? What do, ooh. So what we're going to do, we're going to match that. I'm going to show you how I do that. First thing, obviously, we've mounted on the ring centres. That's good pressure, nice and small, lots of access. We can go roughing gouge. All we want to start with is our cylinder. A little bit to go. Okay, things we need, we're going to want the handle because I need to make sure we've got things set up. That's the middle, so now I'm checking the end and the last set of the ones we vandalised, I need to set up for the stem. Now this stem is 10mm and I can set it off of there. Or better would be to set it off the drill. Right. I want to be just a little bit bigger, fractionally. Next thing I could start to do is I could actually measure it, but I can go, right, I've got just under two whips of my beading tool for the stem. So that 3-8 beading tool is the first thing we're going to do. The ring centres, like I said, 
such good access down here. So, a couple of parting cuts. Check where we are. I know it said we need just over a cut and a half. A tiny bit, I reckon, in lunch. And gently bring this down in diameter. Oh, that's good. Just over. All right. Let's see what that does in a second. We can test fit that in a second. Next thing, we want an overall length of from the bottom of the bead to the overall length of the handle. All right, so we're going from the bead up to there. Now, the easiest way I can do that, I've now got a measuring point, bottom of the bead, set dividers, scribe out. There it is, we have that. Our bead, I'm really lazy. But this is the traditional way. The bead is the width of the chisel, three oaks. Let's get the right calipers. Which one do we use? Those. This has got to come in down, down, down in diameter. A little bit more. That's good. That gives me the width of our bead. I do a parting cut with a three eight beading tool. I'm looking down from above, I'm sighting the stem that we've already cut, which is going into the handle. This side, the other side, needs to be near to. I'm just a fraction wide on my bead. There you go, that got rid of that. Coming down, that's good. So, I'm looking parallel, almost all the way through with the bead. Now we've got to make our bead. We're going to roll it. One, to the other way. Bring it round. As we go over, the handle has to come up. Edge of the tool. That's good. Just projecting that round. That feels quite nice. I think we need a little bit out of that corner where we've done our parting cut. Fantastic. Other end. Check we get the right calipers. So I've got three sets set up now. We want this diameter. There it is. Skew chisel. That's square the end up. I'm picking up the right hand side so we get more access into that ring centre. Gonna roll it. Got a diameter. Bring that round. I can start looking at it. Oh, a bit square compared to what we've got. So it needs to be longer. Get off of there. That's what we're aiming for. Wonder how my ice skew will work. We haven't played with this today. Let's have a look. So we're going to plane that in. Bit more off headstock end. Nice, small, and light. Bring that down in. Need to blend that together. So we've got our handle. It matches pretty well, which is good. Now at this stage, I've got five done now. I've got one more to do. None of them are sanded. Now I would always sand them all at the end. If you sand this now, I guarantee the next one you make, you make the bead smaller and you need to adjust it. So why not leave them all in the white, get them all done, then sand them at the end when you've got all your shapes done. So we'll take that one off, we'll set the next one up, we'll see you when done. I will have sanded them by then, exactly the same as we've done before. Fingertips, better than my eyes. Let's have a quick look. Okay, that's not bad. So let's turn them around, you can have a look. I think I'll be it. All right, so I'll handle them. I've got one more to make. So I'll get the other one done, then we'll get you back. So, sanded, oiled, 
couple of things we need to check. So I've got scrap block, the drill we're going to use to drill the hole in the sycamore to put the handles into. It's not to test it. Does it fit? That's good. It needs to fit tight, but tight enough that you can get them in and out. It will compress a little bit, so you need to adjust that shoulder a little bit. Now I can screw that in. I'm going to hold it up to the light, check it sits square. If anything, I've got a little bit of a step right on the top. So, back to that. Reading tool, body a long way out the way now, so I can get just into that little bit. Need a bit more tension. That should clean that up. And again, just going to double check that that will go all the way up. That's nice. Fantastic. So, we now need to clean the ends up. So, let's get our knockout bar. Take that one out. Give it a go, drill chuck. Nice and firmly in. A little soft rotary pad sander that we'd normally use with the handle. Oh, 240, that's a bit, bit fine, yeah. Let's have that. See if I can hook that back over, that's good. We can do both. So we've got something a bit coarser on here. Bring our speed up a little bit. Just put air on there. Again, not too much speed. And suddenly drop in this in a minute. I know we haven't got a lot there. That's done. Do the same. Our handle. Check what's going on. Nearly there. Let's change the grips. Oh, this is a lot finer now. This is back to that 240. Again, fingertips. That's good. Send that in. I want a little bit of hand paper just to hand sand that in. All right, we do the same with both. Then you can put a little bit of oil on. So we've got a handle. We know that goes in here. This week, still got to do a few things underneath. The bolt will bolt in, so we've got that ready. That sits nicely. We've got our six little handles. Let's just put that all out of the way. Back to our bits of sycamore. Next thing I want to do with these is put a moulded edge on, so they look a bit more decorative, and then we can drill them. If by working that way, we get a cleaner drill hole. So if I do the moulding first, then drill it, we're going to get a better finish. So let's have a quick tidy up, move those, to create a little bit of room. My drill power is going down, which is good. Let's get the little router table. So small router table, ideal for this. So in here, I'm just playing with the router table. I've got a round over cutter. And what I want to just see how much I've got. I'm bringing the cutter down. Oh. Let's see if we can stir up that run. Gonna play with that a little bit just for a second. Just a little task cut. So I brought the cutter down, so we're just getting the round at the moment. I don't want to do this in one massive heavy cut. So that's good. First stage is set. we're going to bring the router cutter up. So instead of doing it in a big massive cut, do it in two or three. Give you a cleaner finish, less time 
sanding lighter. So look it up. Turn it on. Go along, flip it over. For a quick look, we've got a little bit more to come up, but you're seeing our moulding shape coming there nicely. So we've got our little boards, we've got our moulding, got to drill a hole. So I've just started to set the pillar drill up, but first thing, if I can undo my voice, just to hold this, I'm going to make it easier. I just want a, a centre line so I can use a pencil. Alright, so all I've really given myself is a line down the middle now, that was good, I've marked that out so I've got a guide of, and yeah, I kind of preset that up with the original that we did. Then I want to know how long this is. Now I said to you earlier, these are 170, so that's right, half of 170, so 85 is right in there, okay. That gives me our centre point, fantastic, good. Now when our pillar drill starts out, we've got the table. I've cut a couple of bits of MDF which are the same profile shape of what we cut our angle, so we can use that. I'm just going to drop this in here for a second. These are going to support it in a minute. I've got to look in to get lined up with that line. Look. So I'm coming forward there. Let's lock off that side of the fence. Didn't think I'd lock the other. So I'm going to probably block you guys a little bit. Let's lock this side. That's good. Push everything back against the fence. I'm a bit too far there, so just lining up the tip of the drill and it's good to use a lip and spur drill for this. So this is 10mm. Having done that, I'm going to come back and again drilling table, oh wow what a difference, something that you can load, sit on. We all get our pillar drills that have a cast iron table and nothing to help you do the work. This makes a difference. So now lining up the front. Too much. Come back a little bit. Using my hand in behind just to help see it. That's good. Lock off our other one. Let's find where I'm clamping on. Uh, I can see what I've got. Okay. Just check. Oh. Not on that one. Too far up, that's better. And I need to check, I can get these in and out. I can support them. Need to just double check on parallel, that looks good. Tighten things up. So we've got all set, center line, height. I'm just gonna use cork block. I want something to use as a pressure pad down here. That's easier than me trying to get my fingers in there. Feels good. So on. Initial bit, we're going to get the lip and spur to work, slow feed in, down to our depth. Let's have a look. I reckon we've got to go a little bit deeper. So let's just grab a handle and come back. So that will fit. Yeah, I need to go in a bit more. Okay, easy to do. Back in place. This one I want to realign with that hole, so I'm making sure that I put it back in. Just from knowing what we've looked at, I can adjust our depth a bit more, that's good. Support it with my block. Going to wiggle a little bit. There you go, right, so. So our handle, we just grabbed, put it in. That'll score the way up. Fantastic, good, so now I've got one done. I'll drill the other five. I'll see you in a minute.
Right, next little stage, and I've altered the pillar drill again. We put the fence back in place. So I've opened it up, it'll become apparent. We've got to do the three little locations for the feet underneath. One, two, three. I can use the fence by opening up to give me a, a repeatable position in of the side. I can locate with the center point I've got there. That's good. I've set my depth to 10 mil. So what we've got to do with these, put in place. I'm down. One. Bring around. I've got my cross point. Locate in that groove. I'm just looking to line up with my line. Check it. That looks good. Bring around. Last one to do. Okay. Three locations. That's done. Now we've got to make the little feet to go in there. So a quick change of the drill again. We'll bring our fence back in. The other fascia bolt, that'll be good. We could have the extractor on here if we wanted, but this one's not too bad. Let's move that back. Change our drill. 20 mil barrel trimmer, much bigger shank, so I've got to open the chuck up. It's going. Not quite, okay. There you go. I'm gonna to have to come down a bit, look. Get that to lock. Ooh, nearly. Let's come down a little bit. <sighs> Just trying to see which way this is more stable. A bit curved, got a nice straight edge there, that'll work. Now I'm just setting up off the fence. Lock off. My depth will be about right. I'm just gonna look at a little bit. Bring it up, got a spacer guide, that'll be good. So we set the drill. Now this is the off cut off the end. So even that's not been wasted in this. So that's that cut. Let's do a couple more, get a few spares, you never know. So next little bit, we're just gonna cut these off. So I'll go to the band saw, I'm just gonna rip them down the fence. I will have the fence against or the holes against the fence so they don't pop out and skirt around the room, get thrown around the room if they make contact with the blade. Once you pass through, take it off, we can get them out. So I'll be back in a sec. We'll set the bounce so up, we've got a bit of pine. So if we have the upright fence, it's gonna be very high. So just the pine button in between there can be really good as a way of actually spacing me off the fence, but having the guides nice and low. Which way is gonna be easier to push this through? That way. Go check them level. That's not, so we're gonna to have to go there. So. Already looking at problem areas of stability. That's good, gonna put the air on. So, just cut our feet, got a few spares, just sanded the back with an orbital sander just to clean up the pencil lines, level it, that's all I've got to do to that. These, we'd obviously glue in. Now, so look, I've got sawn surface, let's have that that way. They will push in nicely at the moment, they're not bad. A bit of PVA would be good. I'd even line the grain up. So, so we've got our three feet, 
we've now got bulk together. Now I've got a bit of a measurement I can measure through the board, so I know I've only got half inch thickness. I've then got the threaded stud, so I've got a start to look at. So I've just cut my bulk down in length a bit. Let's just check I can start it in there before. That'd be good. I can bring it up to within half inch of there. Fantastic. So by cutting the bolt down, this is the only stage I can do it. I know that it's not too long now. It's not going to bottom out. So I'm underneath. Got to get back in that hole. Two hands just for a sec. And the Allen key gives me something to drive it with. That's better. Pull it up. Now the joy with this is obviously the whole thing can be positioned flat pack when you're not using it. So let's do that one up. That's pulling in now. Let's put that centre stud in. Level. That looks good. Tighten it up. There you go. Up to there. Uh, table tennis rackets. We have a game in it, map. We can go in. In underneath. They will slot in. Ooh, a little bit tight there. That's that. Let's see how they push in. I've still got the surface of these to sand, so I know there's a little bit of material to come off. So they're nice and firm at the moment. Oh, well, that's good. He says the most of them are firm. That one grips good. Let's bring that one round. See how that, that grips really tight. That one, that one, that one. I might go to the sander first. So at this stage, the sycamore bits I'd need to sand up surface-wise flat, okay? They come together quite well. We know there's going to be a little bit of a gap. Our handles will obviously allow things to come in and out. The taper pinches it in place. We've got something we can move. Even the handles on here have done so. These are push fit, not glued. So again, goes flat pack. Something different is a bit of a Christmas thing. We have our lump of wood trees that can go on. Look, that's quite good. So you can take that back to your... Hope you got a bit of an idea on that now, right? So. Like I said, a bit more sanding, and then obviously I could oil this with the citric oil. I could go with something food safe. That's important for this, right? So something is a Christmas project. Something you can put on your table, you can share a beer. It'll make it easier to get your cheese. You can, I don't know, guide the planes in. Who knows, okay? But hopefully you've enjoyed. Something different. We will see you for more Woodworking Wisdom soon. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe. Thank you all very much for watching. I'm going to leave you with it. Bye then.